Welcome, everyone, to episode 25 of Ohio Unsolved. I'm your host, Matthew, and I've got a few scary ones for you guys today. But first, some news. I have officially launched the Ohio Unsolved web store. Visit ohiounsolved.com. There are some acrylic pins with the Ohio Unsolved logo up and soon to be the first Ohio Unsolved t-shirt. I'm expecting them by the 22nd of this month, and as soon as I get them, they will go live on the website. Depending on how well they do, I will get more of them and some different designs as well. Now let's get right into the stories. Everyone sit back, make sure to lock your doors and windows, and get ready for Ohio Unsolved. The first story I have is about the legend of Amy and Lick Road. Just outside of Cincinnati is one of the most popular haunted areas in the state, Lick Road. The road dead ends at the Richardson Forest Preserve, which is maintained by the Hamilton County Park District. There are two paths at the end of the road. Both of them are gated and they lead into the preserve. The path to the right goes through a field, and the path to the left leads into the woods, to a small bridge crossing a creek. It is at this bridge that many people believe is the place where Amy was killed. Sitting at the end of the road can be pretty creepy on its own, but when you start to think about all the stories of the area, it can get even scarier. Many of the stories of the bridge and Amy or you'll hear a woman scream in the night. You might hear footsteps walking up behind you. Or you might even see a ghostly woman in white walking down the road. The most popular story is that if you park your car at the end of the path and just sit and wait, Amy will write the words, help me, in the condensation on your windows. And the most popular thing told is that if you park facing the path, shut off your engine, and flash your lights three times, an orb or an apparition will come towards you down the path. The likely start of this legend is the death of 15-year-old Linda Dyer. On August 24, 1976, Linda was hitchhiking near North Bend Road and picked up by two men in a 1975 Volkswagen. The following day, her body was found under a bridge at the corner of Crest and Banks Road, which is close to Lake Road. The autopsy revealed that she had been stabbed and strangled to death, but due to lack of blood around the body when she was found, it was determined that she had likely been killed elsewhere and her body just dumped there. Her killers were never found. So while this didn't occur at the bridge on Lake Road, the location and details of her death are close enough to the legend of Amy to believe that her death was the origin of this ghost story. Whether the haunting is real or not, it's definitely creepy out there late at night. Have any of you had any creepy encounters while on Lake Road? I would love to hear about it and share it in a future episode. Now, our next story is from yourghoststories.com, 
and is about one person's fear of their basement. My basement has always scared me, so sleeping down there was never an option for me until there was no other option. For context, I've always felt watched while down there, and there was always an intense feeling of not being alone despite knowing no one else was with you. Well, that no one else alive and breathing was with you. For many years, I avoided the basement. I would only go if at least two others would be with me. I was the type of kid to zoom up the stairs and out of the basement. I still get the feeling of something behind me as I go back up the stairs. Currently, I only go into the basement to grab frozen food or to do my laundry. The feeling I've always gotten down there has not left me though. This story takes place in July of 2018. I was 12 when it happened, and it was a hot summer that year. The air was very humid, and it felt sweltering outside. The air conditioner in our home had recently stopped working, and the house had started to become unbearably hot. The only spot in the house that would remain cool was the basement. So that is where we had to sleep for a few days. The first few nights were fine. Nothing happened at all until the night before the air conditioner was fixed. That night, I was struggling to sleep. I'd felt so uncomfortable for absolutely no reason, but I just brushed it off as most 12-year-olds would. I went to bed at around 12 that night. After what felt like seconds, I woke up abruptly. I remember sitting up and looking towards a small space under the stairs that lead into a storage room. I saw a figure slowly gliding towards me from the stair space. I don't remember exactly how this figure looked, but I remember it being black, solid, and its shape reminded me of a blob. I remember closing my eyes after that, but that's all I can remember of that one. I assume I had fallen back asleep. Once again, I wake up abruptly after what felt like only minutes of sleep. This time, instead of looking at the darkest spot, I looked at the laundry room entryway. I thought if I looked towards the most lit up area, then I wouldn't see anything scary. Thinking about it now, I don't see it as scary, but younger me sure did. Instead of seeing an empty doorway, I saw another blob-like figure. It was almost like the last one, except this one was pure white and had black spots for eyes. It was solid white. You couldn't see anything through it. No light seemed to pass through either, but it didn't have a shadow. Just like the last one, it seemed to glide towards me. Before it could even get six feet away from me, I hid under the blanket. I fell asleep almost instantly after, and I slept the rest of the night. The very next morning, I grabbed all of my stuff and headed upstairs. Ever since then, I have not slept in the basement. Our next story changes up the location from a basement to an attic. As always, I'll be reading from the author's perspective. When I was four, my parents and my grandparents bought a two-story house with a beautiful garden. My grandparents lived on the first floor and my parents and I on the second floor. There was a basement which was separated into three rooms, a storage room, a room for my father and his DIY, and a laundry room. An attic, and next to the attic, a small storage room at the time. I loved the basement. I always played there or in the garden. I never was afraid of the basement, but the attic terrified me. I remember I was four and my mother went to put some boxes into the attic. I followed her and I felt very uneasy. It was dark and I could feel eyes on me. I looked in every direction, but I never did see anything. I was little 
and I thought that there was a beast up there. Not a monster, a beast. I don't know why. Fast forward, and I'm eight. Summer of 1991. I played every Saturday with a friend, and I had this genius idea of searching the house to find a secret passage. I had read a book about a girl finding a secret passage in her house, and I was just sure that there was one in mine, because my house was quite old. We searched the basement, but we found nothing, so we eventually went to the attic. It was such a strange place. It was L-shaped, but the left part of that place was totally dark, so we had to bring a flashlight with us. What I could never explain was a hole in the wall at the right corner of the attic. It was three feet tall and quite narrow, but by looking into it with the flashlight, I could see a room, but there was no entry, just this hole. Nobody could enter in. The room was actually behind the small storage room next to the attic. Maybe there was a passageway, but we never did find one. So we were looking through this hole, when I felt uneasy again. I felt something in the attic with us. I kept looking at the far end, where there was no light, and I was sure that something would come at us. I saw nothing, and we went out playing in the garden. The next Saturday, we went back to the attic. We were fearless young girls. My friend never felt anything so I thought that I had an overactive imagination. So this time, I was looking through the hole and my friend had the flashlight. She was standing at the far end of the attic and suddenly she asked me, what's that? I looked in the beam of the flashlight and I froze. There was a young man sitting on the floor, his knees against his chest. His arms were crossed on his knees like he was hugging himself. He turned his head towards us and smiled. We bolted out of the room and went to the storage room. My heart was pounding. I was out of breath. I first thought that it was a real person, but he had no color. It was like a 3D dark shadow, and we never heard any footsteps. My friend refused to admit that we saw a ghost, and we never talked about it. I never did see him again. But the storage room became my room when I was a teenager, and sometimes I heard strange noises. Banging on the wall, the wall that was connected to the secret room, and scratching noises. But I will forever be terrified of the attic. We moved out three years ago, but to this day I still have nightmares. Our final story is about one girl's encounter with a haunted porcelain doll. This story takes place in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the same house as my last story, haunted by a demonic Doberman, which will be featured in next week's episode. If you read that story, then you will know the house that was across the street from mine had a lot of strange activity. First, with the father that hung himself, and supposedly his own Doberman. Then maybe 25 to 30 years later, the son murders his own mother with a hammer and dumps her body in the backyard well, where the body stayed for nearly a year before it was discovered. I was 15 years old at the time that this murder happened across the street from us. So as months passed by, the house was boarded up and condemned. There was something very spooky looking about this house, and when my friends and I would walk by it at night, we would all stop and stare at the windows because we could swear we seen lights in the top window, almost like dim candlelight. So one summer night, my friends and I decided that we were going to see if we could sneak into this house. There was maybe four of us, I think. So we go into the backyard and see the cellar doors. We argued a minute about who was going in first. 
Then we opened the doors and walked in the pitch black house. It smelled horrible, like something rotten. We walked upstairs, but could hardly see anything. I saw a porcelain doll lying on the ground, and I picked it up. This place just didn't feel right. I felt as if someone knew that we were there. Then all of a sudden, my friend starts screaming and runs to get out of the house. So then we all panicked and ran out screaming as well. She told us that she thought she heard a woman moaning and felt something grab her. As we were leaving, I stopped and pulled a small chip of wood off the house and we went back to my house. We all went down to my garage and to try to perform a seance with the items that I collected from the house. I know that it was stupid, but we were dumb kids trying to have fun. We tried to make contact with the spirits that had lived in that house. I don't remember anything out of the ordinary happening that night. We might not have really paid enough attention. Before we left the garage, I hid the doll and wood chip in a corner and I covered it up so my grandmother wouldn't find it. A few days pass and my sister and I decide to go check out the doll. We went down into the garage and we seen that my late grandfather's toolboxes and tackle boxes had all been moved and were all wide open and the doll was sitting in the middle of the floor, not where I put her. Me and my sister grabbed each other and we said, oh my God, and I then kicked the doll and it flew up towards the back of the garage. We closed all of my grandpa's toolboxes and we darted out of there. It took us about a week or so to get up enough courage to go back down there again and check it out. We opened the garage door and we saw the exact same thing. The toolboxes were open again and the doll was in the middle of the room. This time, I found an old box and I put the doll in it and I shoved it underneath a shelf. My mom and sister and I ended up moving out of my grandmother's house shortly after this incident. So about 10 years later, my grandmother passed away and my mom comes to my house with a box and says, I got this from your grandmother's house. Do you want it? I open the box and what do you know? that porcelain doll was inside. I said, heck no, get that thing out of my house. I couldn't believe it. But I think about that doll and I just wonder what it was doing or what had possessed it or manipulated it to move like that. I just have no idea. Well, that's gonna do it for today's episode. I hope everyone enjoyed the stories. If you did, please consider giving us a five-star rating on Spotify and Apple Podcast. It really helps the podcast show up for others that would like this kind of content. Also, make sure to share with any friends and family that would also enjoy these stories. Don't forget to join us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. If you do enjoy this podcast, please consider supporting us by joining the Ohio Unsolved Patreon. There's three tiers to choose from, with monthly bonus episodes available from the $5 tier and up. Bonus episode 4 was released this week, and it's a very scary urban legend from Japan. Well, once again, thank you all for listening, and make sure to keep your doors and windows locked, and stay ready for Ohio unsolved.